In a previous episode, I showed you how to make two single chairs out of one sheet of plywood as part of a full patio set. Well, in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make the double chair. Outdoor furniture complements any home, and what better way to make your own? You get to put in your own style, your own signature, and you save an absolute fortune. It's made out of plywood, so it's super cost effective, saves you a ton of money, and it's easy for you to do. As for the material I've used, I've used a 21 millimeter shutter ply. It's really strong stuff, and I've made use of the guys at Builders to cut as per my cutting list. That way all the hard work is done for you. Now you'll notice on the sizes, I've actually used a nominal dimension of 94, and that matches up as per solid pine, so if you didn't want to make it out of plywood, you can actually just make it out of pine as well. It will be a little bit more expensive though. The additional materials that you need, you need some wood glue and some Craig screws. I'm using the 52 millimeter Craig screw. The most important thing to do is label all the pieces so you know exactly which length applies to which piece of the chair. As for the tools, I'm gonna to be using a tape measure, a pencil, a clamp, a pocket hole tool, a cordless drill driver, and a sander. When it comes to dressing material, it's entirely up to you what you wanna go for. I'm gonna be starting off by plugging my pocket holes with some Craig plugs, I'll be fixing any imperfections in the timber with some wood filler. And when it comes to sealing the timber, I really love this stuff. I'm using the Fired Earth Cabinet and Furniture Paint, a paintbrush and a sponge roller. Now, initially this DIY can look a little bit daunting, but hold there, it really is simple. We're gonna break it down, especially if you've seen the single seater clip, it really is so easy to do. We're starting off with three sections. We've got a box section for the outer leg, one either side, and we've got one in the middle. From there, we're then gonna join it all together with the slats in the middle and the backrest, and that's it. Your chair is complete. Let's get started with the box sections. Okay, there's my first five pieces which I need to make this box frame. We've got our top piece, which is our armrest, which is 650 long, and then we've got our two legs, which are 630 long. They're gonna line up on either side there like so. And then we got our base piece, which is our footing, which is gonna be sitting on the inside of those two legs. And then we got this guy here, which is gonna be sitting 250 up from that outer edge. Just gently build your structure freehand like that, and then we can mark out exactly where we need to position all of our pocket holes, which we're gonna use, make use of our Craig jigs. Now remember, when doing diagonal pocket holes, it's always better to come from the outside in towards the timber, opposed to the inside out. It just creates a stronger joint. Start drilling those pocket holes, and then we can start assembling our first box frame. Okay, all my pocket holes are drilled. It's now time to start assembling. Now you're gonna start using your 32 millimeter Craig screws. Put those in and assemble each piece as you go around. Don't forget the wood glue in between the mating surfaces. Okay, there's our first square section nearly complete. We need to put in the cross brace across the center here. Remember 250 from the bottom all the way to the top edge of that strut. Now I'm gonna put in my seat slat brace here as well. That's that guy which is 608 long by 50 wide. Uh, we're gonna mark it out. We know it's gonna take the support and the loading of the seat slats. Some wood glue in between and then we'll drive it through with some screws. There you go, our first leg is complete. We've got the slats all in position, pop that into place, and it's exactly the same thing for the other side. Right, that's the second leg complete. Let's move that guy out the way. Now we're gonna start the middle leg section. Okay, so let's get all our pieces. We've got a little short little middle slat on the bottom. We've got the top piece which is going in the middle. So we'll line that over the top like that. We've got the back leg section, which is gonna go all the way up to the back. And then we've got the one in the center, which is gonna sit on the inside. And then we'll also have this brace on the inside as well, just to take that loading of each seat slat. So let's mark those up again with our pencil so we know exactly where to put our pocket holes. Don't forget guys, you've still gotta put that brace in underneath. So that's going in underneath on the inside. So it's gonna be very difficult to drill it from the underside, so it's actually easier to put that on now. But remember, you've also got some pocket holes here too. So for this particular piece, we're just gonna flip it over and have the pocket holes on the top side. That allows us to join those two pieces together, and then we can carry on with the assembly. Right, that's our piece joined together. That's our middle slat. We can carry on joining it up to the edge like so. We'll have to hold that into position, and let's carry on with that. 
Okay, there's our middle leg complete. Let's just wipe off the excess glue. Our middle leg is complete. It's now time to assemble each piece together, making use of the slats in the middle. We've got 10 slats either side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now remember we need to have pocket holes on either side of every single slat. That's all 20 slats. 10 this side and 10 this side. Let's get stuck in and get that done. Right, that's all 20 done. Time to start assembling. We've got our outside leg, middle leg, and the end leg is wet there. If we just do this front brace first of all. So let's flip this guy over. And we make sure that we're gonna line up with that brace edge there, keeping it all the same. Remember, wood glue between the mating surfaces, drive those Craig screws in tight, and then exactly the same for the next piece. Right, that's the front brace in. I'm gonna slowly roll it back over to its backside and do exactly the same with the middle brace and the top brace of the back of the seat. Once you've got your top piece and your bottom piece in, you can actually evenly space your slats in the middle as well. Just eyeball it, you can measure it if you want to. Right, that's it, exactly the same thing on the other side. Okay, we're on the home run of the DIY. It's time to put in the slats for the base of the seat. First thing to do, I'm gonna measure the center point so I get my first slat in the middle in its central location. From there on, I'm just gonna eyeball the gap of each slat. There you go, the first side is complete. Exactly the same thing for the other side. Okay guys, that is the seat structure complete. It's now time to actually stop making it look a bit nicer. Fill in all these pocket holes. Any imperfections of timber, use some wood filler. Once that's all dried, you can sand it all down. When it comes to filling those holes, I like to make use of my own plugs that I've cut myself. Now, as you can see, I've got a whole stock of plugs here, which I've pre-cut with my own plug cutter. If you want to find out more about that tool, check out our clip. Uh, but in the meantime, it saves you an absolute fortune if you cut your own plugs. But just apply some wood glue into the hole and then line up the plug and push it all the way in. If it's a bit, bit tricky, you can always make use of the Craig Mini. It has a little recess at the back, which allows the plug to sit in and it helps push that plug into position. I've filled those pockets with plugs. You can also use wood filler. I'm just gonna use some wood filler just to finish off any imperfections in the timber. Once the wood glue and filler is dry, it's time to sand everything down to get it ready for painting. The structure is sanded down smooth and it's splinter free. It's now time to seal off the timber. I'm using the Fired Earth Cabinet and Furniture Paint. This is really fantastic stuff. It's a three-in-one acrylic primer, undercoat, and top coat in one. And what's nice about it is it can be applied directly to timber. Now I'm using a brush for all those difficult sections so I can get the paint right into all those gaps. And then I'll also be using a sponge roller for the larger sections to give me a smooth, even finish on these flat surfaces here. Carry on applying the paint to the surface. Make sure you get in all those gaps with using the paintbrush. And remember, this paint is touch dry in around about an hour, but it's ready for its second coat in around four to six hours. Once you've got the final coat on, allow it to cure for at least seven days. That way you're gonna get the full potential and the hard wearing characteristics out of this paint. The DIY is complete and the double chair really does complement the set. Be sure to check out the other two episodes where we show you the single chairs and the table if you haven't seen it already. Remember, everything you need is available at your local builder's outlet. For more product reviews and DIYs just like this, be sure to check out the Builders Fan YouTube channel and the Builders website. Get to Builders, get it done.